Hello everyone. This is a little bit exciting, isn't it? We're going to be looking at the fantastic kit that you've received this week, this month. Um, it's we're using a stitch called Bargello stitch, and we're going to be framing our work. It's really exciting, isn't it? When we stitch away or when we make paint or different crafts like that, it's really great to frame your work because I think it elevates it a little bit. In your kit, you would have got the instructions bit of blurb from me you'll soon understand when we, i'm going through these instructions just how much babbling on i do we would have received that you would have received your beautiful walls one of which would have been this fantastic gold delicious and you would also have received your canvases what i'm going to do in these in in this sort of short video really is show you how to stitch how to, how to start off with your stitching and also we'll have a little look at the frame as well. Now in the frames you would have either have received a brown or a black frame. Now I love both of them equally and I think the work looks fantastic in brown or black. So that's why I've done half black, half brown and I really hope that you enjoy the choice that you've received. So in our instructions we can see that we've got a fantastic first row. First row in Bargello is called the foundation row. And with a strong foundation, we can build anything. So we're gonna go through the instructions for the first row, our foundation row, and then we're gonna have a look at how we start our second row. Move that over there. Okay, so you would have received a needle, so thread up your needle. And what you will see in the walls is that they're all sort of knotted together, blue together, green together, red together, gray together. Um, but you can do them in any order you want, really. So in the instructions, it tells you to um, count across four. One, two, three, four. And then down 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I'm going to come up through there like that. Now in Bargello, you've got stitch lengths. And the stitch length for this design is four threads. So you've pulled through. Notice how I'm not putting a knot in there. I'm just holding onto the tail at the back. And then I count up one, two, three, four. And can you see inside there are three holes? So four thread length equals three holes. Quite good, isn't it? And then what we're going to do is we're going to try and trap the tail and we are going to count down this time. One, two, three, four. Like that. And then we're gonna come up here, following the pattern as we go. One, two, three, four. And can you see what's great about Bargello is that it's sort of symmetrical, so you can always make sure that you've got the right thread length by looking at your previous one. Into the middle again. One, two, three, four. And then into the middle again. Can you hear the seagulls? One, two, three, four. I don't know what they're called. I think they're called land gulls or something like that but they're very loud but you know it's great isn't it because it's all sunny and nice isn't it so can you see i've done one two three four five stitches and if we have a look on our instructions we'll be able to see that we are now at this space here see that we're just at this space here looking absolutely lovely isn't it our first row so we've done one two three four five stitches okay and then we're going to carry on and what we've done is we've done a peak really haven't we let's breathe out and carry on with our stitching now there we go i always like to go from the bottom to the top those of you that are experienced in stitching you will um, maybe have a different way around of doing it but i like to go from the bottom to the top so we've done our first peak and then we're on to our second peak so it's always one, two, three, four. And then in again. One, two, three, four. But can you see that we're mirroring the stitches to the, to the left-hand side of us? Now, if you're left-handed, one, two, three, four, you can start exactly the same, stop, but start on the right-hand side and stitch across from right to left if you find that easier. 
Here we go. Now, I'm not, see how I'm not counting now? I'm uh, looking across. This is fine. Going up to there. Same size. Always four thread lengths and three hold. One, two, three, four. See that again. There you go. So we're going to go across until we've got four peaks. And we're using plastic canvas because it's quite easy to hold. And it means that you don't really need to have like an embroidery frame or anything like that, which can sometimes get in the way, especially if you're doing stitching for the first time. On I go. So I've done three peaks already. It's going to be fantastic, isn't it? Absolutely love it. One, two, three, four. Always count and always check your pattern as well to make sure that you're doing exactly the same as the pattern. But in the instructions, you can see it step by step with my beautiful hands um, in the images as well. So we're going to go across. And what you'll find is that your first row, delicious as it is, go down here like that Oops, hello. fits onto your canvas and you've got you'll have a little bit of an area around the outside and that's for us to be able to put it into the fantastic frame now I'm just going to use this last bit of wool you've got you've got extra wool so you'll find and then push it into here and that is our last stitch now if we have a look at the um, instructions there you can see that we have got four peaks and we have got two little edge stitches as well turn your work over and thread your wool underneath so that you're making it nice and neat hey what we've done our first row let's start on our second row okay with our second row, I'm using the beautiful lighter shade of blue now. And we're going to be doing the second row. And it's, um, it really is starting all of the time that we've taken on our first row. We'll pay off now on our second row. We are then now going to be doing the second row, which is shown in this blue colour here. So again, it's still going to be four threads long. So you can count down. And can you see... Turn over again, remember, always just hold the tail. And then count up one, two, three. And what you do is the top of your second row of stitching shares the hole at the bottom of your first row of stitching. So can you see, I'm just gonna really hone in there so you can see it. In we go, pull it through. And then we're going to carry on with the pattern. Remember, keep a little bit of a tail behind. And then in we go. And we're always meeting up to the stitch above. Again, we've got the symmetry going on where we can look across and go, hey, where do I start my stitch? I start it here. In we go. My sun's gone in a bit there. I'm doing this at home today because it's nice and bright. And we stitch across. Now, on we go. Stitching across nicely. Always still the thread length is four threads. So we've got three holes in the middle. And across we go. So the longer you take on your foundation row, get that right, that means that every row underneath will be absolutely beautiful. This blue is delicious, isn't it? This sky, it's like a sky, it's like Wedgwood. Remember like Wedgwood when white and, um, I used to do blue and white, green and white and pink and white, sort of pottery crockery. It was the height of desire in the 1970s. I absolutely loved it. This is almost like a Wedgwood sort of a blue from those days, I think. So again, stitch across, all the way across. And very soon, you will have completed your second row. Now, 
Now don't worry if you can see a little bit of a space in between the wool and the stitches because when we frame this, it's going to be um, on a white background. So you won't get to see any spaces and things like that between the stitches. Don't pull too hard, just work away nicely, following it along, remembering to breathe. That's the main thing. Carrying on as we go. And we've made a beautiful blue row underneath the top of our first row. You can see, I'm not going to fit, I'm going to use another piece of wool. I'm going to turn over, weave underneath. Always try and snip off as you're going along. You've got enough wool to be able to um, use more if you want to. So I'm going to thread this up. Push it in, thread it through, and then carry on with your blue row. Make it through like that. And again, no matter where you're starting, always still hold on to the back, a bit frayed, and then up you go. Oops, I've gone around the edge. <laughs> like that, and then like that. So even if it's just for two stitches, catch your thread, turn it over, and weave underneath so you're finished. So what you've got is you've got um, nine rows to stitch. Um, to sort of get through your design. One of those rows uses this beautiful Lurex. Now I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about Lurex uh, yarn. It's woven, do you remember like back in the 80s when we used to have skirts made of sort of like a tube or like this at the bottom of your sweatshirt when you've got like a tube, like a tube cuff and if you cut it or break it, it just unravels completely. That's the same with Lurex Lan, look, if I pull it like this, it all just starts to unravel. If you've got a bit of unravel then like that, just cut it off and thread it through. And you're stitching with the Lurex exactly the same way as you are with all of your other yarns, with all of your other wool yarns. So treat it with a little bit of respect, but don't be afraid of it. It's exactly the same to stitch with as the wool. Once you've stitched away and you've finished your nine rows, a little bit like the instruction here, we then need to do something that's called squaring off. I'm going to do that next. Okay, can you see, we've finished our nine rows that are on the pattern. We're ending in the light grey. It's gorgeous, that light grey, isn't it? And now what we need to do is square off, because we could carry on and carry on and carry on. But, you know, like I say in the instructions, you know, all good patterns have to come to an end. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you this with the um, gold Lurex yarn. We're going to do something called squaring off. Threading the yarn exactly the same as I would for my wool yarn really put and pushing it through like that you can use the paper method as well if you want to pull it through and so rather than rather than um carrying on down by four threads again hold on to the back we want to square it up so we're on a line with the bottom point of our gray row in we go and then in we go again. And can you see, these two stitches, they're only two thread lengths, aren't they? But that's what squaring up does, so we want to carry on. And can you see, one, two, three, and into that hole there. And then into the middle of this stitch, I've, rem I've taken out this top one, just so you can see. And then you go, one, two, three, four and in you go so again wherever you can put a row of um four like a, a thread length of four you do so we're going down here and into here and can you see that we're starting to square off the bottom so that's what you do with the rows above your foundation row and below the gray row and fill them in fill them in with yarn 
quite sad to come to the end of a pattern really, isn't it? As gorgeous as this. I'll just carry on with my one more stitch like that, just to show you how you do the gold all the way across. And remember, gold on your pattern is shown as bright yellow because, you know, I love the yarn, but it's very hard to just show it in a, um, as a colour. Stitch away. And then what you would do is you would then fill in these tiny little spaces with, well, you know, do it in any colour yarn you've got left over, or I think on the instructions it shows you that it's blue. So if you have a look on here, what I've done is I have done the, um, yellow and then i will be adding in a little bit of blue there i'll be filling in that gray one as well i just think it's sometimes easier to see it without the um without that stitch there for you okay well once you've finished your work excitement indeed what you do is open up your frame and you place your work i'm just going to pretend this is finished because hey you know let's carry on take your work and you turn it over and you put it in now you don't need you don't need to um sellotape it in or anything like that what you do need to do is make sure that it's secure so then if you put the back on and turn it over and make sure it's secure and then you can display your work for the world to see if you want to put a little bit of sellotape around it you can but i really hope that you've enjoyed this stitching and I really hope that when people come into your house, they'll take a look at your work and see you for the artist that you are. Thank you now.